bringing more bugs into your house? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose and in today's video, I'm just going to take you through how I treat pests and more specifically, I don't have really big infestations right now because I use biological pest control, which is a natural way of treating pests by bringing good bugs into your house who eat the bad bugs. This is also known as predatory bugs or integrated pest management as Summer Rain calls it. She is a lot more experienced in this. This is just what I do with the advice from people that I know and her videos. So if you want to know more specifics, I definitely recommend asking the company you're buying it from or someone who's actually experienced in this. That's better. <laughs> Stay. Sorry about the Hoya floating into the shot every time. I tried this about one and a half years ago and it didn't work for me. And then I went into sprays and chemical things and stuff, but it didn't work for me. I learned later because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't contact the company to get advice. Stop floating into the shop. Thank you. So this time I've had really good results. The bugs that I bring in help to keep the bad bugs either at a low level, a manageable level, or they kill them completely, which is great. I get these bugs from entocare.nl, which is a business here in Wageningen. You can order them from the Netherlands or Belgium and sometimes Germany. If you're outside of that region, send them an email to find out what is possible for you. Enough chatting, let's just get the bugs out of the fridge and let's get started. Today we're actually gonna do three different kinds of predatory mites. But I'm just gonna take out of the fridge. And the last ones. When you get these in the mail, they come in little baggies. And if you need to store them, they recommend to store them in your fridge, which is what I've been doing. Let's bring them over to the table. Because these have live bugs in them, you can't store them very long, but you can store them for maybe up to a week which is great because normally you buy a minimum of 25 bags. And for the amount of plants that I have, that is plenty. So one of the tips that they gave me through the phone, they have a great customer service. They say you can split the package that you get. So half of them put them in the plants right away. The other half pop them in the fridge and then put them in a few days later or maybe like maximum one week later so that you're spreading out the bugs a little bit more because in the fridge i guess they stay a little bit more dormant and then once they get out into the living room they will start to hatch and grow and stuff so the two that i have today are the swirsky ultimite these are against thrips and the speak all plus which are against spider mites they have different bags, different products, so check out their website. I'll talk about this in a moment, but first, the last product that I have today. In this fridge bag, can I open with one hand? Obviously not. <laughs> Five minutes later. There we go. We've got Entonem, one of my <laughs> favorite products, which doesn't want to come out. Come on. This helps against different pests, which I didn't know at first. I thought they just worked against fungus gnats, but they also work against larvae in the soil from, I think, thrips. If you've had houseplants for a while, you've probably noticed fungus gnats, the little fruit flies that are not fruit flies that are not necessarily so bad for your plants unless there's a lot of them, but they are really annoying. And I tried a lot of different ways to treat them. Nothing really seemed to work until I tried this one. I've only used it once before. And since then, I literally don't have any fungus gnats right now. This is just to keep it up. And also for my Anthurium propagation box, because that's the only place that I still have found some fungus gnats. Application is a little bit different than the other ones. So we're going to talk about them separately, but we're going to do this first because this is a bit more work. So this is basically creating little nematodes, I think they're called in English, little, I don't know, little worms, but very, very small. You can't see them with the naked eye that look like this, very gross, that stay in the soil and they eat the pape of thrips, so a stage of the thrips and the larva of the fungus gnats. It comes in a little bag and it's kind of like a powder that's a little bit gross. 
you put it in water, preferably not water with also something else in it. So keep it neutral for now. Don't feed your plants while you do this, just to make sure that these survive and do well. These are all tips, by the way, that they gave me. I'm just repeating what they told me. One of the tips that I really liked from them is to spread this out as well. Now, I don't think it's an official tip, so <laughs> take this with a grain of salt, but these are a little bit more able to survive in a cold environment. So I'm gonna use half of this today, and then I'm gonna really make sure that I close this baggie off again very properly, put it back in the fridge in its little bag that I had before, and then in about maximum one month, I'm gonna do the next layer. Because I don't have that many plants, and it's that gives you basically double your value of this. And that basically gives you double the value for this one, it's not necessarily double for these because you only lengthen your process with maximum one week, but with this you can lengthen it quite a lot. So let's open it and show you how gross this is. <laughs> I'm going to take you a little bit closer. <laughs> like a dusty, sticky business. I'm going to measure about half and then just pour it in here. This is rainwater, by the way. Not that that is recommended or anything, but I always use rainwater. Can you see how this looks? I did a little bit more than half, but that's okay. Just gonna make sure it's away from the edge. Blech. Get any air out. This is not any of their advice. This is just me thinking this might be useful. I'm gonna put something on here to hold it and put it back in the pouch in the fridge. I actually noticed that on the website, they now have a little bit more instructions about how to use this. One thing is definitely to stir it and to dilute it in water that is not too cold. So I usually bring in rainwater that's about freezing temperatures and then I let it sit in front of my heater so that in general, so that my plants don't get super cold water. But in this case, it's extra important. So for stirring. And the last time I called them, they said it doesn't really matter how much water you dilute it in. It depends on how much water you will need to bring a little bit of this in every plant. But now on the website, I see that actually this one package should be enough for 100 liters of water. <laughs> this that I have it in now is about four liters. So yeah, it's gonna be very strong. I'm just gonna give a little bit to all the plants. I don't necessarily recommend doing it like I'm doing it. I recommend following the instructions on the website or on the product itself. But the last time I read this, it didn't have those instructions. Plus I have ADHD and I'm really bad at reading instructions. Just stirring again to make sure it's all spread out a little bit. And it says on the website that you, sh you should use the whole package at once because the nematodes are not necessarily homogeneous, homogeneously spread out through the little powder that we saw. Don't necessarily do what I do. <laughs> Do what they say! We're gonna basically give a little bit of this water to all of the plants. It says on the description that it's important that the plants have already a little bit of a moist soil so that it's taken up quite well. And I have watered the plants about three days ago, so they should be okay with this. Let's just start with these right here, my beautiful alocasias. Just a little bit. Let's go. water is going quite fast. I have quite a lot of plants in the living room. We're gonna go up to my anthurium seedlings first. The way to get up here is not the easiest. You climb over from the stairs and then you crawl <laughs> to where you need to go, which is here, the place that it needs the most, my anthurium seedlings. They're in a prop box. I will make a video about this separately to explain more about that. Reach. This is very annoying. I'm missing all the plants. Come on. Okay. Ah. This is super impractical because the water holder cannot go in the right angle. So I'm basically missing all the plants. But there we go. That was the last one. I'll put the lid back on and the 
grow lights back on. It is also sitting on a heat mat to keep it nice and warm. Hopefully this will go better from now on. Crawling out is almost more scary than crawling in. Finding the stairs. Yes, I made it. Another place that does attract a little bit more fungus gnats is the tent. So we're just gonna quickly water the plants in there. Quick Maggie appreciation moment. Hi Mags. She sleeps up here all day on my boyfriend's clothes because they smell nice. Little fluffy cat. Mwah. So I basically went around and watered all of my plants a little bit, even the ones in pond or perlite or ceramics. And especially paid attention to the ones where I either have spotted fungus gnats before or where I've previously had thrips, so that in case there are any thrips puppy left, <laughs> that they will be eaten as well. The next step is to do the little baggies. And these are very, very easy to use. Basically, you hang them up in a plant. I guess I do all of my plants, but for example, with the spider mite bags, I put them extra in all of my alocasias for sure. And my varicosum, which has had spider mites for a long time, it's doing better now. And the thrips ones, I guess I also spread out, but I, I put them more in the plants that are more prone to thrips. For example, my syngonium head thrips, the philodendrons and the monsteras and stuff are the plants that thrips really like. So I look at it a little bit that way, but also I just do it. And then maybe I'll switch the bags up if I don't have enough for every plant. These baggies are not made to touch the soil and stay a little bit moist. So you hang them up in the plant. The bugs will come out through a little hole. You can actually see in here, it's a little, like a little cut in the bag. And on this one, there's a little black marker on where they can come out. From there, they usually crawl up. So I try to hang them as low in the plant as possible. Actually, let me show you this in practice so it's much easier for you to understand what I'm saying. We'll start over here with the plants that need it the most. By the way, I bought all of these products with my own money, but we are gonna be working together in the future. If you wanna hang up a baggie in here, obviously in, for example, this tortum, which by the way is doing horrible, it's not growing at all for me, hanging it up would only lead to them crawling up to one leaf. So what I might do is let this sit here for a few days and then switch it to another leaf and then to another leaf so that they are evenly spread out. Obviously they can also, if there are a lot of pests on one leaf, they might, I don't know how they detect them, but they might smell them <laughs> and go on the hunt by going down. But in general, the bugs crawl up more than down. So this one will get a thrips baggie. I personally like to hang them with the little hole towards the plant but according to the company, that doesn't actually matter as much because they will crawl out and crawl across the thingy to the plant where they need to go anyway. Like I said, Vicky has had spider mites for a while, so she's getting an extra baggie because I do have a lot of them. There we go. Um, these are the thrips. These are the spider mite ones. And if you have, like I had before on Vicky, I had them all over the leaves on the top. I would hang one up on almost each leaf to help them eat their way through all the available bugs. I'm not gonna do that today because she's been doing well. She doesn't have as many. So I'm gonna hang one up here to save them some walking distance. We'll do some thrips on the top there for the monsteras. We have some elocasias that want another one here. I don't know if you can see this one, but this is my Alocasia New Guinea Gold that has unfurled a new leaf. And actually it looks like it might get some variegation on there. On my fry deck, I've actually found the most spider mites together with Vicky the Varicosum. So I'm gonna give the fry deck, officially of course, Michael Liciana Mexkowski, I'm gonna give her some extra ones as well. Now obviously you don't have to put two bags in one plant, but since I have so many, I just do. Like I said before, my beautiful Syngonium has had thrips before, so that's getting some fresh thrips baggies. Look at that new leaf, half moon, beautiful. What I didn't explain on this one, and I wanted to add, I do put this one on the soil basically, on the 
ground, which is not recommended because it can create that fungus inside. But this one is in perlite and it was the only way basically to get it in. So if you guys have a tip on how to do that differently, definitely let me know. But for now, it just sits there in the bottom and this plant looks amazing. It was always next to Casper. So Casper is also getting thrips baggies and this Brill Marks Fantasy no, Burl Marks Varigata came from a house where I had thrips infestations before. So just to be sure, I'm also popping them in there. In the terrarium, I don't really use the baggies because there are currently no pests in there. I did pop in one so that it can hopefully spread out through all the plants of each, but it's not necessarily needed because they are doing great. There are no bugs and they are happy campers so far. Look at this new crystallinum leaf. Just a little bit of shimmer right there, so pretty. Oh, and Reggie the Regal is also making a new leaf. Can I show you that? This has gone from a pest video to a plant update video. There we go. New leaf on the way. If you know something about pests, you know that these pests that I'm treating for today are not necessarily happening as much on Hoyas. So I'm not putting any bags on my Hoyas. I have found some mealybugs on my Hoyas, but with the advice from this company, entocare.nl, they actually recommended to keep treating like I am right now with just alcohol killing the ones that I find because there are so little of them that it wouldn't be useful to put those awesome bugs that I definitely want to try one day to put them on there because they won't have enough food and they will be sad or die. This beautiful Cupria has definitely had lots of spider mites. So that's getting a fresh baggie. Oh, this is kind of hard to do with one hand. Hold on. Yep, there we go. Are you sitting on the soil? Yes, you are. And then this Epipremnum aureum, Neon, has had some thrips as well. Oh, actually there is one bag up there. Make sure that it doesn't touch the soil. This one I'll stick in here so that it's hanging and they can climb upwards. And that's it, my baggies are both empty so basically all I have to do now is wait until the bugs do the work for me. They are usually good for about four to six weeks, which does make it a little bit more of an expensive way to treat your pests or to prevent pests. But I don't have to do anything. I don't have to spray the plants. I don't have to treat the plants. I don't have to repot anything. The bugs do all the work and it's much better for nature because any of those sprays can be quite harmful for our pollinators. I really feel good about this method, both because I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to treat my plants once I find bugs again, which has happened a lot in the last two years, but also because it feels better to do something that is good for nature and that's actually using nature's own force against the things that we don't want. So we're creating kind of like an a whole system in our house rather than just bringing in the plants and expecting the rest of what goes along with having plants to not come into your house. Like Summer Rain says, it's more about pest management than actually eradicating all pests from your house if you do have a lot of plants. Now, if you do find a plant that has a lot of bugs on them, I do recommend that you treat it first, that you spray it, maybe with neem oil or just dish soap, <laughs> dish soap, <laughs> and then you let the bugs do their work. So it helps the bugs to do their work. They don't have to do a huge amount by themselves, although they probably could. It's a little bit faster probably if you help them out with the first few to remove them, especially the adult ones. A lot of these bags, I don't know about these exactly, but I've heard a lot of the, the predatory mites and stuff, they eat more of the eggs and the larva and not so much the mature bugs. So it's good to look into that. Talking about that actually, it's really important that you get the right bugs for the pests that you have. And even if you just like look at the thrips, for example, the thrips offers on the website, there are a lot of different options to treat thrips. Luckily, they have a great customer service, which I found out the second time that I decided to try these products. If you know what bugs you have, if you're aware of the pests that you have, you can always call them or email them explaining how many plants you have, how many pests you have, and then they can advise you on which ones will work the best. Also, it's good to mention the temperature in your house and the humidity level and stuff, because that is sometimes important for certain predatory bugs. They need certain circumstances to work the best. If you don't know what pest you have, you just notice a plant that has an issue and you think it's a pest, 
they recommend that you send them a photo of the plant and if you see bugs of the bugs and then they can immediately give you the right advice by emailing them all the information you have plus the photos you kind of make it as easy for them as possible to get back to you and advise you so you can get the bugs as quickly as possible as well the right ones i've had great conversations with their phone line explaining exactly which products i should use and giving me advice on how to use them like i've mentioned throughout this video that all came from their offices overall i am super super happy with this way of treating pests like i said it's a little bit more lazy and also more natural and i feel really good about that i hope this video was helpful i definitely recommend you check them out entocare.nl i will link all of their socials as well below i've tried to answer all the questions that i've gotten about my way of treating and how to treat thrips and all those different things but if you still have questions please leave them below i'm also doing q a videos so i'd love to answer your questions there mostly the questions come in through instagram but i also want to give you guys on youtube a chance to ask your questions and get them answered so please leave them below if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet i heard from someone that apparently in january and february youtube likes to unsubscribe people from channels that they were subscribed to so make sure to check that you are still subscribed if you were and if you want to be of course thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it i hope we're gonna have an amazing year and an amazing spring free of pests or at least with a manageable amount of pests <laughs> a big thank you as well to my youtube members and my patrons i'm so happy to have you guys if you're interested in joining please check the link below, either click join or click the Patreon link that is down there. We have a really fun Discord chat. We do a monthly Zoom call together and much more. So check that out below if you haven't yet. Thank you so much and I will hope to see you soon. Bye guys. Mwah. There is a Hoya tendril hanging right in front of the camera. Matilda, what are you doing to me? If that makes sense. It might not, but that's okay. I definitely don't recommend asking me why does this Hoya keep floating? Sorry, my laptop was making a lot of noise. Both me. <laughs>